Hi. <clears throat> Today I'm going to tell you about the gunpowder plot and how that fits in with crime and punishment. Uh, specifically, why were the gunpowder plotters punished so harshly? Here is the first thing. Religious turmoil since Henry VIII. You should have looked at that in your lessons. Um, but of course Henry VIII created his own church, the Church of England. And then it sort of seesawed between Protestant and Catholic. Uh, um, so you've got Henry VIII. He said he was still Catholic, but he was the head of the church in England. And then you've got his son, who, uh, who flies even more in that direction, says he's Protestant and he's totally against Catholicism and he changes the churches. And then he dies, and you've got Mary, who comes after Edward, and she's called Bloody Mary for a reason. Then it goes to Elizabeth, who swings back the other way a little bit, though she's a little bit more lenient on the Catholics, because Elizabeth is Protestant. And then... You've got the Stuarts, because the Tudor line dies out. Elizabeth dies with knights. You've got James Stuart, who comes along, and when he does, the Catholics are hopeful that James will be uh, a little bit more lenient on the Catholics. He might let them worship freely. And actually, James sort of said similar things as he took the throne. He sort of hinted that he was willing to be a little bit more lenient on the Catholics. Well, that's good news, you'd think, for the Catholics. However... The people surrounding James and his council were very anti-Catholic, especially this person, Robert Cecil. He was really anti-Catholic. And these guys who were very anti-Catholic were a little bit worried that James was taking the throne and sort of saying that and hinting that he was willing to be a bit more lenient on Catholics. So they advised him, no, you can't do that. That is a bad idea. It will divide the country. We've got to take a hard line with these Catholics. So, James... In response to his advice, and cause the mo and the advice was coming from the most powerful people in the country, he publicly um, stated his utter detestation for the Catholics in 1604. So that means I hate Catholics. And so you imagine the Catholic, you think, ah, oh, James taking the throne, brilliant. No, no, no more of this Tudor business where we're getting persecuted all the time. He might be nice to us. And then he says this. You sat on going, ah. Oh. So, the Catholics have got a reason to dislike James because he's publicly declared his utter detestation for the Catholics. Now, it's at this point that I would just like to dedicate this video to Reef in, uh, in one of my classes because he's been pestering me for a dedication for a while and I said I would do it after I got 200 subscribers and I am a man of my word if nothing else. So, Reef, this one's for you. So, <clears throat> why were they punished so harshly? Well, the gunpowder plotters, I'm sure you're aware, Guy Fawkes, all that business, they were caught, uh, they were put on trial, they were found guilty, and then they had a horrible execution which involved uh, being dragged through the streets, being hanged until you're unconscious, but not dead, dropped on the floor, um, then revived, so you come round a little bit, you have your nadgers cut off, which we would call genitals in the exam, um, and then your innards pulled out and burned in front of you and then eventually, I mean, you probably die somewhere in amongst all of that. Then you'd have your limbs chopped off and your head and put on in places to serve as a warning to others, which brings me to the, I mean, this is a key exam question, by the way, brings me to this one, deterrent. The, one of the reasons all this was happening, and it happened in public, you know, there was crowds of people who came to see this going on, and it was a deterrent. It was like, if you plot against the king, especially if you're Catholic, this is going to happen to you. It was a deterrent. Make people look and go, I am not going to do that. Um, because it was a horrific punishment. Why would these be so keen on a deterrent, though? Well, linking to the deterrent is the fact of this religious instability. Catholic, Protestant, Catholic, Protestant, harsh, not so harsh. And it was just swinging, swinging back and forth. And because of all this, there was lots of angry people in the country and at this time it's mostly angry Catholics but not entirely there's angry Protestants as well if I go back some sheets you might remember what the advisors being strongly anti-Catholic and Robert Cecil so they're angry with the Catholics uh, even though the Protestants are in power and the Catholics are angry because James has announced his utter des detestation so there is a real risk of anti well, of Catholic plots, anti-Protestant plots, plots against the king. So if you punish them so harshly, you might deter other plots from happening. You know, because they were fearful of more of these plots. What else we've got? This 
Public punishment would also encourage anti-Catholic attitudes. The crowd could throw things at the prisoners, and part of them being carted through the town first was so that people could throw things at them. It was an opportunity for people to take out their anger on the Catholics, um, and this encourages anger against the Catholics. It was a public showing of how you should act towards the Catholics, how you should feel towards the Catholics, and so it would encourage that. And that's what the king ad king's advisers would have really liked, especially that Robert Cecil fellow. Um, other consequences which are in the textbook as a result of this uh, it, it, it gave the government it gave James and his advisors the excuse to be really mean to the Catholics maybe that's what they wanted all along maybe they just wanted an excuse because of that anti-Catholic feeling amongst the king's advisors so because they had now had this excuse they banned Catholics from voting which lasted until 1829 that is over 200 years later. Wow. Um, there was also this 1606 um, Popish Recusants Act, which forced the Catholics to swear an oath uh, of allegiance to the, to the king and to take part in Church of England services. And then, and this one which you'll probably be aware of, though you might not have known of all of the stuff going with it, uh, there was the Act of 1605, the Thanksgiving Act for the 5th of November. Uh, giving thanks for the fact that the king was saved. So every time you celebrate Bonfire Night and the fireworks, that's because of that act, which said that it had to be celebrated or commemorated every single year so that people gave thanks that the king was saved. And it was also an opportunity to bash the Catholics a little bit more. So when you're doing that, you're actually celebrating uh, the king being saved and the anti-Catholic feeling at the time. And there we go. There is the gunpowder plot. I hope you enjoyed that, especially you, Reef.